So the Ryder Cup, it is not too far away. The final pick has come in in terms of captain's picks from Jim Furyk. Um, and it opens up a whole debate for me in terms of who's got it right so far. We'll not know the answer until the end of this month for sure, but all us armchair fans, what do we think of captain's picks time? Who's got the best team? Who is gonna win the Ryder Cup? Uh, 2018 and let's start with that so comments down below it's largely going to be whether you watch this video as a European or an American I assume who's going to win the Ryder Cup Team USA or Team Europe that's the first question I pose but because of that how much influence are the captain's picks been are they right or are they wrong who's done their homework who's got it right at this point and the biggest thing for me I think there's controversy on both sides in terms of the picks. Let's go back, can we get back to the American? Well, I've got the American team here. That's on me a little while, but I've got it back up on the screen I wanted, which was starting off, first of all, with Team Europe. Who has Thomas Bjorn gone with? And let's see, first of all, with the captains. He's Donald, Harrington, Carlson, McDowell, Westwood, vice captains, that is. Very strong team of support network behind him with a wealth of experience in the Ryder Cup. And he's certainly gone down that route in terms of the wild cards, in terms of the captain's picks, as they call them. First of all, let's look at the players who qualified based on merit, which is Fleetwood, Hatton, McElroy, Molinari, Norren, Ollison, John Rahm, Justin Rose. Justin Rose, the new world number one, Justin Rose, that is. So you look at that and we've got there's two or three players in there, not got the massive experience, rookies as you'd call them, slightly concerned about never gonna know how they're gonna perform once they get out into the bright lights of the Ryder Cup. So for me, Bjorn has recognized that and he's very much gone with experience in terms of who he's done in captain's picks. Casey, Garcia, Stenson, Poulter. Now then, I'm okay with three of those picks, those three are Casey, Poulter and Stenson. And the reason I say that is because I think we need experience in that team. So I've got it and I'm, I'm happy with those three players, but they've got experience, but they've also shown some form over the past six months. And that's the key difference between them and the one that I'm not sure about, and I don't like saying it, but it's Garcia. Now I love Sergio Garcia. I'm a massive fan of his. Obviously, he's a fantastic player. He's got masses of experience in the Ryder Cup, and I pray that he can bring a game with him. But it's gotta be said that he's shown no real form whatsoever leading up to the, uh, the last 12 months, maybe almost. And that's the big deal. I just wished, and I'm sure Thomas Bjorn did, that he wished he was showing a little bit more form. The other side of the argument, maybe, is that does the form book literally go out of the window? when you're standing on that first tee at the Ryder Cup, because I dread to think what it must be like. It's my, I think I'd collapse in a heap, to be honest with you, because the atmosphere, I mean, it's just the best golfing spectacle on the TV, by an absolute mile for me. The, the drama um, that it creates, uh, it certainly has done in the past, and I hope it does again, it, it's just phenomenal. It just, you cannot take your eyes off this golfing spectacle for three days and I can't wait for it to begin but yeah when you get out on that first tee I mean I think you know experience is massive it's got to be I mean if I look at players like Matt Fitzpatrick who turned up a few years ago and to me looked like a bit of a kind of um, rabbit in headlights is the way I describe it and it didn't really work for him that time that's the kind of concerns that you'd have with rookies turning up will they perform uh, out there on the day who knows but that's the team Europe, so what are your thoughts on that, all you Europeans out there? Let's switch to the Team USA. Jim Furyk at the helm, he's got Duval, Zach Johnson, Steve Stricker, Davis Love and Matt Kuchar as his support network in vice captains. Again, wealth of experience and um, yeah, good strong team behind him there. Um, then let's have a look at first of all Team USA qualified on merit, which was Fowler, Johnson, Kopka, Reed, Simpson, Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, Bubba Watson. Now I have to say, let's take a slight gulp of air there when I read that team out. We haven't got to the captain's picks yet, but 
that's a strong USA team. And I, when you sort of read the two teams out, I don't know how the betting is working on this thing, but I'm assuming Team USA have got to be fairly strong favourites. Uh, although it's on European soil, they've got to be strong favourites based on what I've just read out there. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that just yet. Captain's picks. Okay, so Deschambeau, Woods and Mickelson were announced uh, earlier on. And he waited till the, the event of the weekend and he's gone with Tony Finnow as the final pick for Team USA. Dijon Bo, an absolute given. The form that lad's been in has been superb. Again, he's shown he can handle himself at the top level. Fairly confident sort of character. Got every feeling that he will turn up and not be put off or swayed by the pressures of the Ryder Cup. May be wrong. Tiger Woods, once again, goes without saying in terms of experience, but the fact that he's shown the kind of um, form that he has done over recent month, yet again, just backs up that pick. Fantastic to see him back competing as a player in the Ryder Cup. No one would have guessed this probably 12 months ago. Um, who else? And then Mickelson. Mickelson's one where he's probably the closest to the, to the Garcia situation, whereby he's not shown any major form, in my opinion, none that I can think of. However, this is Phil Mickelson, and for me, in match play, a player like Phil Mickelson is an absolute must, because he can literally make it up and down from absolutely anywhere. He's the one that sticks the dagger in the heart where you're sitting nice and pretty, six foot looking at birdie, and the next thing he chips in, and all of a sudden you miss the birdie putt and you lose the hole. It's that type of scenario with Mickelson. He's got the experience, he's got an immense amount of talent. He hasn't got the form right now, I've got a feeling though he might be able to pull something out of the bag when it matters. Um, and then the Tony Finnau pick, I mean I think Finnau's been fantastic this last 12 months. His performance in major championships, uh, I think again, I've not got records in front of me, but I think he's performed pretty much in each of the majors. Uh, he's been right up there um, leading up into the final day. So once again, very much a form player. I have to say, and this is the interesting one for me, I want to know a couple of things on this video. I want to know you, you mainly, and again, I imagine the comments will be divided bet between sort of where you and who you support. What are your thoughts on the captain's picks? Is the discussion for debate? Um, did they get it right? Did they get it wrong? Who would you have picked? Who would have been your four? Who would you have swapped round? Uh, so that's the main core in terms of the comments that I'm looking for. But I suppose you also want to think, in the broader picture, who's feeling more confident right now in terms of the overall uh, result? That's the all-important thing. I have to say, like I said, I keep looking down at this uh, laptop and seeing the American team. It does look incredibly strong, uh, but it's looked strong in the past. The form book, I think, to a degree, does go out the window. It's very much dependent on how the captains can galvanise their teams, get them playing together, get the picks right in terms of the pairings, and uh, I hope that when it comes down to the, the Sunday, then singles day is throwing up all kinds of different permutations in what could or could not happen. And we've got the drama that we always get with the Ryder Cup and uh, whoever wins played in the right fashion. I will be without doubt, Team Europe all the way. I'll be supporting them to their health uh, during this weekend and every American out there will be supporting Team USA as they should be. And uh, the winner will always be the team that plays the best and deserves that win. So I can't wait to see it. Um, but for the time being, let's just talk wild cards or captain's picks as they call them now. What do you think? Did they get it right? Who got it right? Who's leading the way right now? Fjorik or Bjorn? That's the final question for you. Anyway, it was nice to sit back down and have a chat because I've been a bit sort of uh, not been able to do this as often over the last eight or ten weeks. So it was nice to have a little bit of a chat. It'd be great to get that comments box firing again and uh, we'll get a bit of interaction going, get the conversation going leading up to the Ryder Cup. And we've got a few more things to discuss, none more so than I will announce what competition we're going to run uh, for the, well, we've got a bit of a decent giveaway going on, but uh, I'll reveal more on that. Uh, when I reveal how that competition is going to be run and that was decided by you in a video not so very long ago. I'll announce that soon. Anyway, see you soon. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you want to do. See you soon.